All right, so today we're going to go ahead and go over day two, mole to mole conversions. So you do have a warm up question or a recall question balancing chemical equations. So directions using coefficients balance the following equation. Okay, so first off, what you want to do is identify what type of reaction do you have? Do you have a synthesis, decomposition, or a combustion? Okay, so if you answered combustion, you are correct. Okay, how do you know that it's a combustion? Well, look at your products. Your products are also, um, are always going to be carbon dioxide and water. Okay, <clears throat> so if you want to go ahead and solve this on your own, you can go ahead and push pause. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go over how to explain your um, combustion or balancing a combustion reaction. Okay, so first off, you always want to start with hydrogen first. So hydrogen on our reactant side, we have six. On our product side, we have two. So what times two equals six? Well, that's going to be a three. Okay, but remember our um, balancing combustion rules water or hydrogen cannot be a odd number. We're going to have to double it, so it's going to be a 6. <clears throat> okay, so if I now have 6 times 2, that's 12 hydrogens on my product side, well, then that means I'm going to have to make my coefficient a 2 on my reactant side. So that way, um, let me see. So that way you can also equal 12. Okay, so now that hydrogen is balanced, we can go ahead and move on to carbon. So carbon here, we have 6 times 2, so that's 12. But on our product side, we only have 1, so our coefficient is going to be 12. Okay, now that carbon is balanced, we can move on to oxygen. So oxygen, I always like to start with my product side because that's where the bigger numbers are. So 12 times 2, that's 24 oxygens, plus another 6 oxygens from water, that's 30. So what times 2 equals 30? Well, that's going to be 15. Okay, 15 times 2 equals 30. Okay, so that's how you balance... Um, combustion reaction equations. Okay, so back to our moles to moles conversion. So we do have a cooking analogy. Okay, so grill master KT Tigers has the art of grilled cheese sandwich making down to a science. The grill master's recipe requires two pieces of cheese between two slices of bread grilled to perfection. What is the coefficient ratio of the ingredients to the products? Well, your keyword, coefficient ratio. So what are our coefficients for this um, quote-unquote equation? Okay, well, our coefficient, two, two, and one sandwich, right? Two slices of bread with two slices of cheese yields one sandwich. So our ratio would therefore be two to uh, two to two to one. Okay, so um, now that we know our ratio, <clears throat> Grill Master Tiger knows that a 20 pack of sliced bread and a 20 pack of sliced cheese will always make the same number of grilled cheese sandwiches with no leftovers. So if he has a 20 pack of sliced bread and cheese, well, how many can he make? He can make 10 sandwiches. Okay, he can make 10 sandwiches. So what happens to Grill Master's cheese, uh, grilled cheese sandwiches if he changes the quantities of the ingredients? Will he have enough ingredients or will there be leftovers? Well, if you tried to make a grilled cheese sandwich and let's say you had um, six slices of cheese and only four slices of bread, well, would you still have enough to make a sandwich? 
No, right? Probably not. You would have more cheese than you do bread. So um, changing the quantity of any single ingredient will change the number of sandwiches. Okay, so let me just write that down. So changing the quantity of any single ingredient will change the number of sandwiches he can make. Okay, so if you want more practice um, making grilled cheese sandwiches, you guys can log on to this website right here. Okay, it's just an online simulation of practicing ratios using um, that sandwich ratio. Okay, so what cooking really is, is stoichiometry. So I'm actually going to move over to my key notes so that way I'm not writing so much. You guys can just pause the video um, if I'm going too fast and you need to catch up on notes, okay? But what cooking really is, is stoichiometry. So if you know a really good cook, okay, someone who's really good at cooking, they're probably really good at stoichiometry. Okay, stoichiometry is the calculation of quantities in chemical reactions. So we're trying to figure out um, if I have a certain amount of a chemical, well, is it going to be enough to produce how much chemicals I need, okay, to produce a product. Okay, so if we have N2 plus 3H2 yields 2NH3, well, how many molecules of each reactant are required to produce two molecules of our product? Well, if we have two molecules of our product already, well, then that means we only need one molecule of nitrogen and three hydrogen molecules. Okay, and our ratio for this equation is going to be one to three to two. Okay, one nitrogen, three hydrogens, and two ammonias. Okay, now another question, how many moles of each reactant are required to produce two moles of the product? So again, we have two moles of products already. So that would mean we would have one mole of nitrogen gas, three moles of hydrogen gas, and two moles again of our product. So again, our ratio is one to three to two, okay? It's going to follow the same ratio as your chemical equation, okay? So instead of using cups, teaspoons, or tablespoons, we have the mole map, okay? So number one on our mole map is actually representative particles. So remember that particles would be considered as atoms, ions, molecules, and formula units, okay? so. Again, our ratio was one to three to two, right? So it would be the same for representative particles. We would have one molecule of nitrogen gas reacting with three molecules of hydrogen gas to produce two molecules of ammonia, okay? It is always the same coefficient ratio. This is important. It's always going to be the same coefficient ratio as your chemical equation, okay? It's just like how we use the same ratio for the two slices of bread, two slices of cheese equals one grilled cheese sandwich, well, it's going to follow the same thing chemically, okay? It's going to have the, um, I already went blank. I forgot what I was going to say. Okay, moving on. Okay, so number two, on our mole map, we also use, um, let's see, it might help if we were on the right view. Okay, so number two on our mole map would be moles. 
So one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen gas to produce two moles of ammonium gas. Okay, so it follows that one, three, two ratio. Okay, so third on our mole map is mass. We have a law of conservation of mass. Um, remember that was from our last unit, okay, which says that the mass of our reactants must equal to the mass of our products. So if our reactants are nitrogen gas, okay, and hydrogen gas, remember we have one mole of nitrogen gas. So we have one mole of nitrogen gas, <clears throat> that's going to be, remember nitrogen is only 14 grams, so times two, that's 28. Hydrogen gas, we have three moles of hydrogen gas. So hydrogen weighs one gram, but remember we have three moles times two, so that's six. So six times one is six. Okay, so if this is the mass of our reactants, 28 plus six is going to equal 34, which is also the same as the mass of our products. Okay, so main thing that you should have got from that is that the law of conservation of mass says that the mass of the reactants must equal the mass of our products. Okay, and then lastly on our mole map, we have volume. So remember that our conversion factor for volume is that for one mole of gas, it's going to be equivalent to um, <coughs> 22.4 liters at STP. Okay, so again, you would apply. Attention, Katie students, it is now 3 o'clock. If you are not with a teacher, sponsor, or coach, it's time to leave the building. Teachers, please assist us by looking outside your classroom in the hallway and reminding students they need to exit the building at this time. Thank you and have a great afternoon. Okay, so again, you would still use your ratio, your coefficient ratio, 1, 3, 2. So, one mole of nitrogen, so one mole times 22.4 is 22.4, okay? We had three moles of hydrogen, so three times 22.4 is 67.2. And then we had two moles of ammonia, so two times 22.4 would be 44.8, okay? And then um, to actually do our multiple conversions, Again, we're going to take a look at this equation right here. So nitrogen gas plus three moles of hydrogen gas yields two moles of NH3 gas. And again, our mole ratio or our coefficient ratio is one to three to two. Okay. So because we know the ratio, we can calculate the number of moles to find, I'm um, sorry, number of moles of another substance. Okay, we can calculate to find the number of moles of another substance. I feel like that's worded funny. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look Okay, at these sample equations. Okay, so again, our coefficient ratio was 1 to 3 to 2. 1 nitrogen, 3 hydrogens, 2 ammonias. So, our example question is how many moles of ammonia are produced when 0.6 moles of nitrogen gas reacts with hydrogen gas? So our first step is always to identify what has been given. So our given is 0.6 moles of nitrogen gas. Okay, and our question is asking for how many moles of NH3? Okay, so if 0 0.60 moles of nitrogen is our given, okay, now I'm going to let you know that if you're converting from a moles of one substance to moles of another substance, then it's just going to be a single step problem. Okay, so one more time, if you are converting from moles of one substance to moles of another substance, then it's going to be a single step equation. Okay, so you would solve this just like you would solve uh, moles. Okay, so if this is moles of N2, then on bottom is also going to be moles of N2. 
and what you're trying to find goes on top. So in this case, we're looking for moles of NH3. So moles of NH3. Now notice how I left out my coefficients, okay? <clears throat> or my number of values. Where you're gonna get these numbers from is from your balanced equation, okay? So if you're, if you have to balance your own equation, if you balance it incorrectly, then your whole answer is going to be wrong. Okay, so balancing your equation is very crucial for the rest of the unit. Okay, so again, we take our number values from our balanced equation. So what is the coefficient for nitrogen? Well, that's going to be a one. Okay, and then our coefficient for ammonia is two. Okay, so that's gonna go right there. Okay, so this conversion factor right here, this is going to be your coefficient ratio. Okay, your coefficient ratio comes from your balanced chemical equation. Okay, so now we can go ahead and solve. Moles of N2 is going to cancel out moles of N2, so what we're left with is 0 0.6 times 2 divided by 1. Okay, so 0.6 times 2 is going to be 1.2, and then we're left with moles of ammonia. So moles of ammonia. Okay, and we box our final answer. Okay, so just doing the first problem, you guys can see why we were so hard on y'all for giving us a number value a unit and a chemical or compound. Okay, this is why. It's because we're going to start changing or converting from one element or compound to another element or compound. Okay, so you have to have number value, a unit and your um, element or compound. Okay, we will be looking for each or all three um, when needed. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our other practice problems. Okay, so our practice problems, we have a balanced chemical equation of um, manganese oxide plus hydrochloric acid yields manganese um, chloride plus water. Okay, so number one. How many moles of water are produced when 3.02 moles of MnO2 reacts with hydrochloric acid? So what's your given? Our given, okay, automatically just look for your number. Okay, wherever you have numbers, that's most likely your given. So 3.20 moles of MnO2. And our question is looking for moles of H2O. So 3.20 moles of MnO2 multiplied by our conversion factor. Since we're going from moles of one substance to moles of another, it's just a single step problem. Moles of MnO2 belong on bottom. So that way our units can cancel out later on. And what we're looking for is moles of H2O. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and go back to our chemical equation to look at our coefficients. So your coefficient for MnO2 is right here, which is a 1, and your coefficient for water is a 2. Okay, so we can go ahead and solve moles of MnO2, and moles of NO MnO2 are going to cancel each other out. So we're left with 3.20 times 2 moles of water divided by 1. So 3.2 times 2 is 6.4. Now remember your answer, I'm sorry, your problem, your question gave you three significant figures. So your answer should also have three significant figures. And our unit would be moles of water of H2O. Okay, all right, so number two, how many moles of hydrochloric acid, I'm going to go ahead and circle that, 
because I already know that's my question. How many moles of hydrochloric acid are consumed when 1.65 moles of manganese 4 chloride are produced? Okay, so this is my given. This is my um, unknown or what I'm trying to find. So 1.65 moles of MnCl4 okay multiplied by our conversion factor which is our coefficient ratio so if this is moles of mncl4 then on bottom should be moles of mncl4 what we're trying to find is moles of hydrochloric acid so hcl and then again to find what our coefficients are we would have to look at our balanced equation so MnCl4, that would be a coefficient of 1. Hydrochloric acid has 4. Okay, so cross that out, cross that out. Okay, because they cancel each other out. And we're left with 1.65 times 4 moles of hydrochloric acid divided by 1. And... When you multiply 1.65 times 4, we should get the answer of 6.6. .6. Now remember, if we were given three significant figures, then our answer should also have three significant figures. So 6.60 .6 moles of HCl. Okay, so at this point, if you want to go ahead and try number three on your own, go ahead and pause the video just to, so we can see we're on the same page. Um, okay, but if not, you can just go ahead and just keep, continue to watch. Okay, so number three, how many moles of water, moles of water, that's my question, what I'm trying to find, are produced when 4.35 moles of manganese chloride are also produced? Okay, so our given is 4.35 moles of MnCl4. Okay, so if that's moles of MnCl4, then this is also moles of MnCl4. What we're looking for goes on top, and we're looking for moles of water. So moles of H2O. Okay, so I look for my coefficients. My coefficient ratio would be for my balanced equation. So coefficient for MnCl4 is a 1. Coefficient for water is a 2. Okay, so 2 times 4.35 is going to be 8.70 moles of water. Okay, so hopefully you got the same answer as I did. If you guys have any questions or if something wasn't clear, um, please, please, please come to tutorials or ask questions during class. Okay, you guys have homework on the next page on page 8.